Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I've got a 60 minute session that I'm doing for a client. So I'm gonna be sharing energy work and wisdom. I'm gonna read the client goals here. Um, this is gonna be intense. And also this is a follow up session too. So I'll put a link to a session I had done last year. Um, so you can watch that if you're interested. Okay, all right, so goals are, from our last session, I wanted to stop smoking and I have. I have not smoked a cigarette since the end of 2019, which is so awesome. Okay, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of you too. <laughs> I think we're all proud of you. That's a really hard thing to accomplish. Good for you. Okay, now however, I have serious health issues. Last week I had diarrhea and vomited quite a bit of blood with fever. During hospital stay, it was determined I had chronic gastritis and severe nasty ulcers that they suspected had erupted. I had a hiatal hernia surgery back in 2016, right before my daughter's dad died. Anyway, they gave me a blood transfusion, wanted to give several units, but gave only one so I could return to my daughter. I have been home now for two days, and I still can't stand for more than two minutes before feeling extremely weak. I have fears that something else is going on since getting blood is supposed to give you energy, right? My goal is for intense energy work to heal all of, all of the involved chakras suspecting solar plexus and throat. Also, energy work to heal my right shoulder. I believe it's a rotary cuff injury from my attempts to work out months ago. Pain has progressed to the point that I can't find a comfortable position to sleep in. Compounding this is I'm supposed to lay sitting up to keep stomach acids down, but I have pretty pronounced scoliosis. That doesn't allow me to do that. I'd like my spirit guides and maybe Archangel Raphael to tell me what my body is trying to tell me. I want to let go and submit, but fear is blocking me from visualizing white or even green healing light throughout my body. Please help, as I know my daughter is scared since she just lost her dad a few years ago. This is a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff going on. I'm just tuning into all the energy right now. That's a really exciting introduction, having quit smoking. And now we have some new stuff we gotta look at here. Okay. And thank you too for being open to sharing what you're going through and then allowing me to help you through this and then we get to learn from the spirit realm too all right so getting tuned in here so we'll see what things look like it looks like there's a really odd noise and it just sounds like <laughs> it literally sounds kind of like that. It looks like um, blood that's trying to kind of coagulate around the sides and it's got some density in the center of it. Um, and it looks like you, like you're this, you're this blood popped blood vessel or something. It's hard to know how to put, put yourself into balance. If you're just a blood splatter, it's hard to know how to put yourself into balance here. So it's gonna look extreme. You're going through extreme situations. So we're just one image at a time, okay? So this is the first image. You're watching, you have sort of a higher eye that's um, watching me interacting with this blood. And I'm, I'm just touching it. It's interesting because you had a blood transfusion. 
and I'm looking at blood. It's just not, it's, it's like, um, not active. It's not energetically active. I'm like literally touching it and nothing's happening. It's not speaking to me at all, which is okay. It's just the first introduction to things. So I'm going to bring Archangel Raphael in and bring in your spirit guides. And I'm showing them, this is what I'm seeing. What do you think? We're going to just let that scene just be. So we'll set that over there. And then they're flying in a different direction. So I'm going to just follow them. This is a lower dimension. It's kind of like, um, like the road was steady and then the road broke and then it chunked off and it fell down into this lower dimension. So I see like a broken road and then there's where the road like fell apart. And so we're going down there. It's actually, there's a light here. It's not like I'm in the dark and it's literally like a highway. It's just an open road that broke. And the road isn't broken. The path is not broken. So we're all working together like a team. Like there's eight of us and we're working on hoisting up the road and reconnecting it with the road um, that it used to be connected to. There's a meaning to this message because you don't want the old broken road you actually need to be at peace with the way the road has broken. You need to be thumbs up about it. <sighs> because they're showing me that us working together to put the roads back is not fixing anything, actually. It's just trying to put life back the way that it used to be. And that's um, actually not the right pathway forward. It needed to break like this. It needed to. And so we need to just let that be. They needed to show you that. So um, we're looking again at this information with this weird blood. Um, it's just an oval shape. It looks like a blood splatter. It's kind of um, trying to create some kind of skin around the edges. It's not like it's flowing or going anywhere. It's just sort of staying in place. But I'm starting to see it's formulating into the form of a person, which would be you. But you don't know how to see yourself right now. So you're kind of, a, it look like a shadow being formulated, but you have density to you. There is a, so you've got a lot of extreme things going on, but your energy field is quieter than I anticipated. But it also feels like there's a bit of a, I don't want to call it a block because it's not, it, it is in a way like a block, but it's like a blanket that is a muting sound to help you cope with it all. But it's it's also here, it's kind of um, not allowing in the, the guides and the angels that you're really wanting to let in because you're going to have to expose the wounds. And there's there's so much meaning to what you're going through that the more that you acknowledge it and then open up um, to receiving, it's like acknowledging the, a reality that's very hard for you to cope with. Um, so you're just, it's... It's not on it. It's not like it's totally we can alter that. We can definitely help more of the light to come in. No problem. Um, but part of this healing is I'm going to have to get you to really embrace the situation. And that's hard. 
And see, it's like it's almost like it's stuck in my throat as I'm trying to talk to you about this. Um, you're talking about, I almost, I'm almost certain you had said something about throat and solar plexus. Um, there's definitely something lodged in the throat here. There's definitely something lodged in the solar plexus right now. Um, they're really overwhelming me. All the while, it's like, it's an invisible shield. I'm not allowed to really remove it right now. I'm literally sort of forced to just look at the scene. And, and I want to have more power. I want to have more impact. I want to have um, more ability, but I can't. I don't get that. Is this how you feel? Is this how you're feeling inside? Expressing this? Um, needing to just say this inside of yourself? You just simply need to look at it like this and just say this? That I, I'm seeing this. Um, I want I want to let the love in. I, it's like getting stuck in my throat here. I, I'm resisting. I don't mean to. Um, it's like it just keeps getting lodged in the throat. So I'm just going to see this as a reflection of you that's working through just embracing the experience you're going through, which is easier said than done, right? Baby steps here, and I'm just next to you, and I'm holding your hand, and I really want to bring us as close to the blood spot as we can get, okay? It's not necessarily about your blood transfusion. It's not necessarily saying that was not a good blood transfusion, but it's interesting that it's your reflection and your identity looks like blood. It's, so there's something strange to that in my mind. So I'm trying to get as closer to this. You're kind of formulating into like a, a shadow. Um, you're not really sure how to be or who to be. And I'm coming as close to you as I can, and I'm trying to bring this part down with me, but she's just kind of um, stuck in this spot, stuck in this place. And it's almost like you have a bit of a shield. You want the comfort of your guides. You want the comfort of angels, Archangel Raphael, but you're creating some separation here without meaning to. And so even there, they they can show me stuff, but I, I'm the one, I've got to get invasive here. I've got to get in there. <laughs> so... It looks like a broken world when I get in close to here. It's almost like all of the explanation of what this means is lost in translation. It's like many broken words that try to create a, a sentence that's just a broken sentences and it just can't even express what it means to itself. And it, it's like broken chunks of ground, broken chunks of road. Um, it's levitating in... It's not necessarily outer space, but it's in a strange, like, um, I don't know, it's like a brownish teal color um, with clear as well. Um, you're standing on what is like a round circle. It just right rises up just a little bit. You're kind of um, in this odd, this halo that goes around you um, of this weird blood which now I see you, you look, you look like you're a formulated person now, but you're not glowing, you're not bright. The most powerful way I can heal you is to go beneath the surface of what is going on here. To get to the root of why this all manifested then will bring healing to everything above that root. Like it starts here at the seed where the seed is planted and then all these branches grow from it. So if I can get to that beginning and I can heal the beginning then it heals everything. I can just see your third eye is getting really clenched up. It feels such a slow moving pace, but this is actually creating movement here in your third eye, movement in your solar plexus. Your heart is making a little bit of sound. And I'm starting to feel like I can fluidly communicate. It's not necessarily getting stuck in my throat. I'm starting to feel like the words are coming back together again. So the world does, it feels like it can come with some explanation. 
starting to feel um, airier, like air, like not um, thick, dense energy, but I can move about um, more easily. You're really lost. You're stuck in making decisions. And the part of you that I was sort of still up there, um, kind of above looking down, just like trying to explain itself in its feelings and it's getting kind of stuck in the throat still and is holding itself back from coming down. And your guides are projecting love like constantly, love, 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 love. And I'm in here as close as I can be to you, to this seen here I just touch your third eye I mean there's lots of words that come to my mind like you're at peace now you understand why like power phrases that give you permission to rise above um, being kind of broken by the circumstances, but coming together and being totally secure in yourself and what you're going through. Easier said than done, but I can energetically, I can help you get there, okay? You understand why. You understand why. And in understanding why, you are at peace now. I'm doing this through your third eye. You feel secure in yourself and your circumstances. Everything is right in the universe. It's okay to let your guides, angels, Archangel Raphael in. is quite powerful. There's actual energetic activity that I'm, I mean, there's sound. Your energy field should have sound in it. But it's like, almost like yellow pollen is being released from your third eye, so it looks like. And it's helping you to come into a form, not to be a shadow or, you know, but to be a form of who you are, um, but to come together, to be together within yourself, to embrace this experience. Easier said than done, but the speaking about it and planting seeds to give you strength and courage because that's how you get through these experiences. Strength and courage. That's the first thing I'm supposed to do here. I'm just giving you a massive head. Like, your third eye is impacted because my head is getting a very big headache. <laughs> That's good. That's a very good thing. That means there's a lot of movement going on in there. This is only the beginning. There's still so much we're going to discover here. This is the first part. You definitely have a connection to the earth. And it's almost like Mother Earth wants you to come to her as well. Not just guides and angels, but Mother Earth wants you to heal with her as well. And because this platform kind of above everything, we're not going to any lower dimension, but we are getting grounded. And I see like your the the distance from like the true love of our planet, um, you're quite separated from that. And I need you to feel like really present with the true love of our planet, and to feel that love um, flowing through you, because it's really wanting to reach you. And maybe that could have something to do with an inspiration of um, eating different types of foods. More earth-grown foods, more natural stuff. 
but there's definitely earth calling you <laughs> earth to you <laughs> earth is calling you <laughs> okay you're, you're starting to cry. This is great. We're making progress. This is really good. These are natural. This is natural. We can let go of all the weird broken roads and we can just move on from all that. Weird orb, the weird blood, the, the part of you that's trying to communicate doesn't know how. We can just move on from all that stuff and we'll start with Mother Earth. See, we're start, we'll start fresh with Mother Earth. It's cool. And all the guides and angels, Raphael, we're all coming with. We're all going with. <laughs> it's cool. There's a very noticeable barrier between you and the planet. You're definitely getting closer, but this is different the, that all that other stuff we were looking at totally gone because it has nothing to do with you anymore we're working with and the next layer of energy and it's like a weird uh, floor that goes all the way around the planet and i mean it's as high as the clouds okay this floor is so we're still at a distance from what is being grounded to the planet and the floor is hard it kind of reminds me of a hospital floor in a way. And this was keeping you separated from the earth energies. Nothing against hospitals at all here. There's just something um, that's just what they're showing me here. You're starting to cry again and you're starting to see the ground crack and open up but it's it's not necessarily the earth that you see um, under that crack that open like you're looking down it's not necessarily the earth it's like some weird black wormhole I just slow you down a little bit I say if it's a black wormhole you see then we can work with that we can work with anything that wants to present itself to you. We can work with it. There's nothing scary about black wormholes when they're supposed to be majestic earth planet. There's nothing scary here. You say, I don't want to be swallowed up by that. You say, who's swallowing you up? Is it you swallowing yourself up? Because there's no black wormhole that can ever swallow you up unless you want it to. I don't want it to, you say. And that's it. It's starting to uncoil. It's actually starting to just go turn in the opposite direction, which is clockwise. <laughs> it was spinning counterclockwise and now it's spinning clockwise. And it's starting to diminish and go down into just a disappearing. It's just disappearing. And I take you like a child and I have you get on my back and I'm going to give you a piggyback ride on down to the planet now. And you want, in a way, you want permission to be a bit like a child that you could be taken care of by someone right now. But you have, there's so much of you that has to be an adult that has to be an adult that you don't get the permission to be the childlike self that's being nurtured and taken care of because you have so much responsibility. So I'm doing that for you. And I tell you, just be a child and just be like you're sick at home in bed. And I'm going to be like a mother and no, I'm going to get you the chicken noodle soup. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do that for you. If you throw up, I'm going to get that cleaned up for you. You, uh, clean your sheets like to make you feel comfortable it's that kind of thing just be the child right now just be the child
This is good. This is very good. I'm getting you closer to the earth. <laughs> but um, me encouraging you to be the child is you've got some, you know, inner demons. They're not actual demons, but they're structures, energy structures and patterns um, based on what is the pathway um, that gives us some consistency. We grow with the consistency, which creates normal stuff. And the normal is saying, I need to be a strong adult. But now in the journey, I'm saying you need to be a child and you need to be taken care of. You need to do this because there's too much, simply too much stress. And now you have the dark energy structures that are saying that are freaked out by me telling you this. Because if I if I encourage you to be the child, um, then then your fears are going to come back, right? As to why you don't be the child right now, you can't. So they're kind of all the dark smogs coming out of your head, and it's freaking out at me. But that's something that needs to be dissolved got to dissolve that you actually your energy field is under so much stress and so much responsibility and so much you have to be the adult like you have to be that it's actually ripping you apart in a way I mean you're totally strong you can do this but right now your energy field I am the parent here in your energy field that this time you're for this time you're not going to be the adult <laughs> I will do that responsibility while you be the child. And this reaction is something that's actually holding you back. <laughs> it's not helping you. You could call this a uh, fear of not being able to take care of your daughter. You have to be the adult. You have to be the parent here. And what happens if you're not there? You have to be there. And you can't be the child. You have to be the child right now in my journey for you. <laughs> so you do, do need this. You even need to play pretend in your mind. It's sometimes during the day, even if it's for five minutes, a couple times during the day, and visualize yourself as a child in bed um, with Mother Mary or whoever you want. Um, to be there to um, give you some chicken noodle soup, um, give you a glass of water, and this is coming straight from heaven. And then take the five minutes to taste Mother Mary soup and to feel like a child being taken care of. And that this soup has got all the healing medicines of heaven. And that as you consume it, it's the, the medicine that your body needs to repair itself. But it's giving you permission and intermission out of life for peri just short periods of time to be a child. Because that's going to alleviate a lot of stress. And it's also going to get you reconnected with your guides and angels in a, in a healthy way that's going to work for you. Okay, and it's going to work in your situation as well. Simply the visualizing of the light and everything, if you're not able to do that, they're showing me to do this. Pretend to be a child in, in your bed and talk to Mother Mary about what you're going through. You know, talk to Archangel Raphael, cry, um, be a child, um, be a baby being held, um, have these um, visualizations, um, eat some soup, drink some nice cold water, angelic water. This is actually bringing a lot of powerful energy into yourself, okay, by doing this. And it's going to give you permission to take some breaks by having to be the super parent all right at a time when it's very hard to just be just be you you're i'm totally moving things around your third eye because it is there's so much stress and pressure that's 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 moving and it's processing and it's very positive very positive So it's quite dark down here. <sighs> this is a very weird scene, okay? Very weird. Mother Earth is with us, just so you know. She is like got us wrapped up like babies in her arms. 
So we just need to accept it looks like this. And then we need to work through why does it look like this? And then we'll understand more about you and your situation. This, has, this is getting lodged in the throat here. Solar plexus is starting to light up. It's very exhausting. Very, very exhausting. There's a lot of energy coming from the back, my backside, and then going up and over my head. And I'm just like, I like feel like I'm just, like all my energy is just going exhausted. I'm very exhausted here. That's good. That's energy movement. We're gonna feel our feet on this weird ground. It, it sounds like Mother Earth beneath our feet. It sounds like grasses and leaves and things like that. But everything is completely like covered in a black. Your heart's starting to um, gain some, um, it's like singing, it's like speaking, but very softly it's expressing itself. I'm going to see, I see Archangel Raphael's feet here are on the ground with us. Your guides are here, angel guides, angels, heaven, mother earth. Your soulmates. And we're all merging together as just pure light, okay? And I see you as the child here, and we're actually having you inhale us as just one breath of air. And it's all this light, okay? So all the love and the light that's here to support you through this experience, just inhale it on in, okay? And you say, but then I'll feel alone because the light won't be around me. It's going to be inside me. <laughs> the light is inside you. That's great. But I get it. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. Say, I want you to grow flowers through this darkness. I want you to start growing yourself a garden in here. And these flowers are going to help to nurture your stomach. They're going to consume the acids. They're going to heal and repair your stomach. These flowers are. It's almost like this earth space is like your natural, what your natural stomach should look like on the energy sides of things. Healthy growing garden of Eden going on in here. But there's this darkness, this sort of a layer of darkness, so you can't really experience all the, the wealth of, of nutrients and love and healthiness that's existing here. So we're going to plant a garden that's vibrant and colorful that we can see through the darkness. And this garden is going to thrive off of consuming the negative, um, the acids and all that. It's just like trees. They give them the carbon dioxide. They'll give you oxygen, right? They're going to consume what is... Um, makes it an inhabitable environment for us, but they're gonna consume that and then release what makes it habitable. I don't, it's like trees, who would have thought? Freaking amazing. <laughs> we don't even have to invent them. They already were made. Like, <laughs> so we're gonna plant lots of stuff here in your stomach that does, that works on this level with mother earth, okay? You have to believe too, because you're, your oh man, your third eye is for the headache is is on again, dizzy, exhausted, um, s staying with it. You showing me fl planting flowers and then it's just like no, it's they're they're not gonna survive. It's too acidic. <laughs> it's like okay, well we'll give you water. We're just gonna flush all the acids down. We just flush it, neutralize it out, and then continue to plant the flowers. We're going to bring in the sunshine. We're going to let it rain in here. We're going to bring in what is natural Mother Earth style into your stomach. So trust. You have to trust here. You're going to have to let go of being human, and you're going to have to trust here. 
trust that you have the power to change everything. You have the power to change everything. It's starting to feel like you're a child having to hold the world upon your shoulders and it's too much responsibility for a child too. I ask Archangel Raphael, what would help you to not feel such a relationship, um, a responsibility to do so much? Whether the responsibility is to being the parent, the adult, or the responsibility is to just simply being a child receiving. Um, but now the child feels the burden of the world upon its shoulders. So what can we do to help you let go of a, an attachment to responsibility? I mean, you're always going to have responsibility, but there's so much stress. We got to get that, reduce that. So Archangel Raphael says, um, give me an order and I will do it. And he's talking about how we're working with energy here. So if you don't want to plant the flowers, if that's asking too much, which it actually feels like it is, then ask Archangel Raphael to plant them for you. Um, give, direct him on what you, what you want to have happen here. You're taking on so much, you're bearing so much. You're going to have to let go of your daughter, okay? Because you can't, you have to live through this, right? But because you have to um, for her, and you can't let her go without both parents now. I get it. I'm with you on this. The Spirit is showing me, though, that you have to ultimately trust in the situation. You aren't, you aren't God here, okay? You're human, and you're living through a human experience. And as much as you want to control the outcome and control every aspect of it, this one is not under your control. You can choose to play pretend and eat soup with Mother Mary. You can play pretend and have Archangel Raphael plant more flowers in your stomach to help with the stomach acids, and you're gonna believe in this. You're gonna know that that's what's happening in real life, because it is what's happening. You're gonna work with your imagination. You're gonna work with psychic gifts, healing gifts. You have the power to heal yourself. It's not like the black worm is just gonna swallow you up and it just is, you say no, it isn't. And I'm not swallowing myself up here either. And no black worm is gonna swallow me up into its wormhole belly. And then that power, that fear goes away. You gotta restructure your relationship with control. You, you, that is a big one. You have to let go of that one, okay? Because even me talking about it is helping to loosen that up. And it's helping to, to, again, you need all the energy you can get right now. You're expressing so much energy in your fear of not being there for her. You're, you need that energy for yourself right now. So you feeling the, you putting energy into fears is actually... Um, going to make it harder for you to heal. And you need all the energy you can get. So you got to let the energy come back to you. You have to know that everything is going to be okay. And everything is taken care of. You have to know that. And it's literally one of those moments where I touch your third eye. Everything is going to be okay. And this is you saying this to yourself. Everything is going to be okay, and I'm trusting in this whole process, and I'm going to let go of my fear that I'm not going to be there for my daughter, because I don't have to be afraid of that. 
and I'm going to continue to work with um, all the soulmates and the angels and the spirit guides and all the beings that I love most and I'm going to just let them on in to heal and repair me and I'm going to take time to visualize myself um, in new ways like a child being taken care of um, like a, a kid on Easter hunting for Easter eggs and I find many and then I get to show mom and dad how many Easter eggs I found and I get to eat candy like th these are like really fun little imaginary moments that you can live in the moment and have that experience and it'll bring brightness to you it'll bring warmth and joy to you continue to drink lots as much water as you can like water is the neutralizing component like I anything that's out of balance it the water cleans it flushes it it cleans our earth it cleans our bodies cleans it even if you don't feel thirsty, if you can. I don't know what their recommendations about water are, but um, water is really, really good. <laughs> if you can, okay? <sighs> already me talking about this and just exposing it is already helping you. Like I'm, more of the energy is coming back into yourself and it's helping you to become strong and feel strong. And you know that the love inside yourself is the most powerful love of all. So now you're ready to, to take that nice breath um, and breathe the light of all in. I mean, it's not just your soulmates and your spirit guides and your angel guides and Raphael and, um, and a part of even me. Um, it's source. It's all of us. It's everybody. We all love you. We all love you. And we're all here for you. And so when you take that nice deep breath in, all the love is, is entering into you to help you, to nurture you, to tend to you, and to feel taken care of. Every breath you take is bringing in more light and more love to nurture all the parts of you. Oxygen is another good one. <laughs> Getting some good oxygen in your system. You're already, you're feeling a lot. I mean, you're, I feel like we're ready to move into a new scene, but I'm just going to wait a minute. I mean, you're making huge strides here. You remember, it's like, you remember a time when nature was pr super pristine. And that... It's like if there was an ailment in your body, there was it was almost like it had an interconnected relationship with some kind of ailment that was taking place in the planet. And there was very few, there was never any illness or sickness. But it's almost like you were so empathic to the planet um, that you could tell if the planet had a need, you would feel the same need inside of yourself. And you found techniques in order to main, to manage um, the balance of the planet, which then would manage the balance of your own form. And it was supernatural. But there was also a learning component. It wasn't like you just were a Mother Earth, like in an all-knowing, um, in the balance. It was more um, like you were learning about yourself and yourself's relationship with the planet um, and you were learning throughout your life about this. And this part of your soul understands why there is so much sickness in the world today because of the sickness of the planet. So our relationship empathically, you just, you know how important it is for the planet to be healthy, then the humans are healthy, that everybody who lives here then is healthy and thriving. Um, you're talking about this. Because we're all one body. It feels like your soul has uh, more work you want to do in this life. And you want to see to the other side of this thing and to see what's there waiting for you. You want to you wanna continue to grow and learn still in this life.
it's almost like this extreme situation is giving you an opportunity to to transform your relationship with yourself and the world around you. It's to develop a gifts, psychic self-healing gifts. It's almost like an awakening for you. It's almost like getting access to a powerful awakening through a process of suffering. To be on the other side is like this newborn experience, this newborn identity, this new version of self-love and self-care. And it's a new strength. It's like a total upgrade. You know, there's a difference between a fear and a knowing. You, you have the choice here. You could be afraid of what, the worst case scenario and then your daughter being alone. Or you could have a knowing um, that you're going to see this all the way through. And you're going to ask heaven for more ideas. And it's going to revive your senses. Um, and you're going to embrace the experience and learn from it the way that part of your soul had learned from the planet. It's not necessarily saying it was planet Earth, but it was quite a thriving, healthy, gorgeous looking planet. That you were just an inhabitant, but you had like a, a gift with nature where you empathically could feel different parts. Like if you weren't feeling good that day, you sensed that there was something that the planet needed. And you would empathically heal the part of you, which then would heal the planet, that part of the planet. It's like you kind of knew somehow, but you were learning because you some unexpected things also seem to have happened too. That's what it feels like. And you have the power to do that for yourself right now in this life, in this moment. To take this as an opportunity. And say, maybe I just needed it to get this bad before I would start doing the one thing I've been needing to do all alone, along, all along, which, which is to discover how to heal myself. Discover what I'm capable of. Start actually working with my guides. Like, get passionate about it. Get excited about it. You have a lot of power within you and you're transitioning from the human approach to what is the evolved human, which is a psychic and empathic, um, a higher self role within the human form, ascended. It's really cool. I can feel you're so much brighter. Your spiritual atmosphere, which was so oddly quiet, it's got these rays of, of light. Um, it's a newfound purpose, um, strength and security. It's a knowing that there's work to do, but a knowing of how to work on it. Um, how to work, how to manage your feelings right now. How to be truly strong. Um, is sometimes pretending to be a kid too and taking a break from having to be responsible all the time. Um, working through this, learning some new ways of being. You're feeling so bright and uh, so much brighter than when we began, like so much brighter. And all of these different rays of light have a like a harmony or a sound, like a song that they're singing. Um, you're starting to fill with music from the inside. That is so essential. Do you see how we're bringing the energy back into you? Or being, bringing it back, bringing it back into you? Um, and it's, this is how you heal. This is how you heal this. This impossible situation isn't so impossible now, is it? It can be healed. We'll bring the energy back into you. Okay? It's working. Okay, the next thing is a heavy heart. They're showing, they're allowing me to feel what is a heart and the heart is now getting heavy, okay? And I feel it, heavy heart. Um, 
Is there anything in your life where you um, blame yourself, kind of? Like, maybe that happened because I should have done this. Is there anything like that? Because it, it's like um, expressing to me what, what reminds me of... Um, should have been like this, or I should have been, I should have said that, or done this, um, in order to change a certain circumstance. And so there's kind of like a blaming of the self. Again, you and your relationship with responsibility, you're taking on the response, too many responsibilities. In the end, it's, it's, your only responsibility is, is to yourself and towards being a reflection of the love that you believe in. Um, the love that you want to receive from others is the love that you choose to share with others. That's your only responsibility. Everybody else has to learn their own path. You can influence it by just being the love that you believe in, right? And emulating that for others to decide if they want to emulate that too. If that's also what they believe in. And so, again, anything that you might bl have blamed yourself for... Or you could have done better here or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, taking on too much responsibility. Nope. So that's, that's you trying to shield another soul from their learning. And then taking it upon yourself that you didn't do enough. You know, something of this kind is what it feels like. So we're going we're gonna to let that one go, okay? So let me just continue to watch and feel this and we're going to learn some more. I mean, I just see the word blame, okay? Blame yourself for something. I mean, you could even blame yourself for the situation that you're in right now. It's not necessarily what this blame is. It doesn't feel like it's that. However, it, it's like, it's again, your relationship with responsibility. Gotta forgive. Forgive yourself. Forgive the circumstances. Forgive it. You know, let it go. You're stronger this way. Because you don't need to hang on to it. You're so much stronger this way. So many people hold on to, like, don't know how to forgive themselves. And they get to the end of the road and they still haven't forgiven themselves. They could have had a bright, beautiful life if they would just... It's like, you, you can forgive yourself. Give yourself some room here. Life is about learning. It's going to be full of mistakes, so to speak, you know? That's great. That's really great. Your mistakes don't mean that you failed anybody or even failed yourself. Those mistakes were perfect. Perfect mistakes. This is really hard. I mean, I'm starting to notice how in a rock you are. Um... I'm just getting, I mean, your heart's getting really heavy here. It's getting really, oh, like, very weighed down, very exhausted, hard to breathe through. You're getting a headache here because we're moving stuff around the third eye. It's almost like, it's almost like you're too hard on yourself. Way too hard on yourself. <sighs> see, see how we're, we're, I'm still removing this by the way, but you see how the power of removing this stuff is bringing the energy back to you in a healthy way. <laughs> we're giving you the strength to get through this here. Because you don't need to carry that weight. Because that's just putting more energy into the wrong stuff. <laughs> no, no, on your checklist, Archangel Raphael says, um, no blaming yourself. You, you, no, no being afraid here. Okay, trust, trust that everything is right. Ask, it, ask heaven um, for advice on how to heal yourself. Take some time to pretend that you're a child, eating chicken noodle soup with Mother Mary. Like, like this is your to-do list. It's awesome, actually. It's really great. It's also bringing the energy back to you. It's circulating the energy back into yourself. Okay. Still working on this. 
heavy heart. There's really something you just, you really feel like you, you literally are, it's my, it was my fault or something. I mean, you really are stern about it. Like really, you know, I find I can let go of everything, but this one is kind of what you're saying. It's so heavy in your heart, it's actually falling into your um, solar plexus. And it is a bit in the throat, too. We're just going to let it be. We're just going to feel the heavy heart sinking into the solar plexus, and we're going to feel this lodged in the throat. We're just going to let it be. And we're not going to label it as bad. We're going to say thank you for being just exactly as you are. Thank you for helping me to learn and understand and grow. And have you heard if you feel like you need some time in the solar plexus, then I'm going to allow that and ask heaven to teach me how we can work together to enhance and expand and beautify the relationships between the different chakras. This is interesting. It, it's, um, it's something a little bit about loneliness and the heart is sinking into the solar plexus because it wants company. It just wants to be nurtured and held. It creates a sense of security. But true security is the security that comes from inside of you. Easier said than done. So we have to help the heart to feel secure in itself. Do you, is this what where heartburn comes from? <laughs> when there's a need for the heart to move into the stomach? <laughs> because it's like, hold me, hold me, stomach, hold me. It, it is really doing this. And no amount of me just, heart, you're fine, go back there. Just go back there, heart. Is <laughs> it's like it just keeps going back. So we have to we have to go a different um, direction with this. I ask the heart if this is a healthy relationship with the stomach. I mean, the, it's literally what we're looking at. The throat is definitely involved with this because your throat chakra is waving at me. It's almost like a kid in school that really wants to answer the question. <laughs> I ask Heart if it would like Throat to say something, or Heart, is it important for you to say, you to answer the question? I feel like Throat and Ego are a little too, like, um, they would tell it like it is, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't necessarily help the situation. Man, your heart is so heavy. And it is so heavy in the stomach. Again, I asked the heart, is this a healthy relationship with the stomach heart? The heart is gonna, it's, it's again about responsibility. 
if it if it ha is asked to go back to where it belongs kind of thing then it has to take responsibility for itself in a way I mean it's like don't please I just need somebody to take care of me like it's kind of like this I don't know where else to go and the stomach's the closest thing I got it's kind of what it's saying here and I'm not strong enough to go back because I just don't know how to be alone. I don't know how to do it alone. So there's insecurity here. I ask the stomach what it thinks about what heart had to say. The stomach doesn't have, like, it's not, it's just like... It just continues to circulate. It's, 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 it's focus is on itself right now. It's, it's like just another thing going on and it's just trying to just keep focusing on itself. It's, it's just, it's, you're asking me to stop what I'm doing to, to explain something to heart. I need heart to, it's like, I need to focus on myself right now. Heart's just creating more needs. It's, uh, it's like hard on me. I mean, this is how stomach doesn't even have time to explain. Like, it just needs to keep focusing every bit of itself on itself. It's actually helping Heart to realize that um, the best lover it could be for the stomach, the best companion it could be for the stomach, is to be supportive. That the heart needs love too. But the time for that is, is to be supportive for stomach. And the best choice that heart can make is to find the strength within itself to go back to where the heart belongs. Throat is actually very quiet because it's... It's almost like it was it was just too caught up with ego like it, it would just say something that would be that would be kind of true but offensive in a way you know so the throat's starting to understand so it's starting to get it and heart is kind of slowly but surely going back to its like lonely home ask Archangel Raphael what he thinks about this Um, he just, he doesn't know why the heart would find that it would be a lonely home. Because the heart is literally the central component of all source energy. Like, it's where the soul is. It's like the connection to all, literally, every soul. It's the heart. The heart is the center of the universe. The center of, like, where all the love is. Why the, would the heart ever feel lonely? It's almost like the universe is asking you to, to find a strength within yourself that you may not be ready for, but yet to decide to be ready for it, that strength will come like that fast and triple, quadruple the power of itself. Because as soon as the heart says, you're right, I am, I am like the gateway to literally every soul in the universe. Why did I feel so alone? But to have the strength to acknowledge that, to start working with that truth, is hard when you feel that exhausted that you're going to sink on into the, <laughs> the stomach in order for to have comfort. So this, there's going to be a strength. It, it's, it's like you got to say that thing in order to unlock the truth, and then the strength will come. This is really, really massively helping. I'm waiting for the heart to decide. I just, I, I'm your heart and I'm having a mouth here that says, I am alive, I am bright, I am strong, 
I'm connected to the love of all. I am the love of all. I am literally source inside of you. Everywhere you go, I'm with you. Everywhere you go, I'm in your heart. Your soulmates, your angels, your spirit guides, heaven, and on and on and on. It's all in your heart. This infinite space of pure love is everywhere with you. There's not a day goes by that it's not there with you. It's time that you allow yourself to feel that and to ask for help in working with that truth and to become strong in that truth and secure in that truth. Does that really sound like a responsibility to you? Or just a true, a knowing, right? Like a knowing in it. And then to live based on these knowings is going to take a lot of the burden off. And this idea of responsibility doesn't actually exist. It's just working in alignment with the knowings, right? Bringing the energy back to yourself, trusting in the process, learning from it and learning what you're capable of, working with Mother Earth, you know, getting to know some new spirits, some new consciousness, um, could be very exciting, right? Talk to the heaven as often as you want. Visualize, but play pretend, like, like enjoy pretending inside yourself. Taste all different types of foods, like any food that you like, that you really, really like, eat it in the energy world, you know? Like it's actually, it can be really delightful, especially when it's served on like a silver platter um, by like heavenly angels that's full of like energy nutrients, you know? <laughs> Who doesn't want that? That actually is putting light and love into your body. It's like praying, um, but it's taking prayer a step further by actually participating in the prayer experience and then receiving it blossoming inside yourself. It's cool. All right, that's what I had to share. That was so neat. You just never know what you're gonna get. I mean, gosh. <sighs> Thank you very much for being open and uh, I'm really happy to help and thank you for sharing. For those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, everybody, have a beautiful day.